In this screencast, we are going to discuss the contrast and source of signal in an MRI image. At the end of this screencast, you should be able to describe the concept of T1 relaxation and T2 dephasing and how they contribute to signal generation and explain how different TR and TE times lead to image weighting. When we think about MRI contrast and MRI signal, the signal that we are measuring are the number of protons spinning transverse to our C-axis or perpendicular to the bore of our magnet. The amount of signal that is generated relates to how many protons in a particular voxel are spinning in a transverse orientation to that z-axis. And there are two different components to the spinning of a proton that dictate how much residual transverse magnetization is there for us to measure. So let's think about the T1 recovery and the T2 dephasing. This first chart talks about the T1 recovery or recovery of longitudinal magnetization. So initially protons are spinning in our z-axis. We create an RF pulse. That RF pulse transfers energy into the protons causing them to spin perpendicular to our magnet. This here is a graph of how much longitudinal magnetization there is. And so when we first apply an RF pulse, there's no longitudinal magnetization because all the protons are spinning in the transverse plane. But over time, protons, based on their local environments and what types of bonds and tissues they're located in, will start to slowly reorient with the z-axis of our magnet. And that the time it takes for recovery of that longitudinal magnetization or the time it takes for protons to realign with the z-axis is called your T1 recovery time. One important thing to remember is that we have to have protons in line with the z-axis to excite them with our RF pulse. Remember that for later. When we think about our T2, this chart down here explains our T2 properties that contribute to signal. Initially, all our protons are aligned in that z-axis. We apply our RF pulse. Okay, That RF pulse causes all of the protons to not only go into the transverse plane, but to also be perfectly aligned with one another. But because of local magnetic field inhomogeneities and, and differences in the molecular bonds that the protons are in, they will start spinning at slightly different speeds. As they begin spinning at slightly different speeds, even though they're still all in the transverse plane, they start to cancel each other out. So this one cancels that one, this one cancels that one, this one cancels that one, and this that one, so that there's now no longer any measurable transverse magnetization, not because all of the protons have realigned with the z-axis, but because they are out of phase with one another. And so you can see that the transverse magnetization right at the RF pulse is maximized, okay, and then you lose that transverse magnetization as there is realignment with the z-axis and that takes quite a bit of time and there's also loss of your transverse magnetization due to dephasing and that dephasing tends to occur very rapidly. When we think about the importance of our relaxation time or our TR we can think of the TR as how much time we allow the tissue to recover before we re-excite it with another RF pulse. And an interesting property of these protons is that our RF pulse can only harness any longitudinal magnetization 
to create transverse magnetization. And since different tissues relax at different speeds, depending on how long you've let them recover, different tissues will have a different degree of longitudinal magnetization when you apply that RF pulse, and so they'll contribute differently to signal. Water relaxes very slowly, very slowly. It takes almost three seconds for water to fully recover its longitudinal magnetization. So when you apply an RF pulse at a very short TR, you have not given water time enough to recover, and therefore it has very low signal or can look black. Fat relaxes very rapidly in the order of 100 to 150 milliseconds. So with a short TR, you will fat will have a lot of transverse magnetization on that RF pulse and therefore will contribute or be bright on your image. When we think about neuroimaging, a T1 weighted image that has a short TR, you will have CSF, which has not recovered its longitudinal magnetization that will look dark, gray matter which has recovered more than CSF and so is brighter than CSF but is darker than white matter, which has recovered the majority of its longitudinal magnetization and is therefore ready to receive that RF pulse and create more transverse magnetization. And it's only the transverse magnetization that we can measure. So we can only excite or harness the longitudinal magnetization and we can only measure the sum of the transverse magnetization. So in general, your T1 signal is going to be based on the sequence's TR. So if we have a long TR, almost all the tissues had time to recover. And since all the tissues had to time to recover, they're all going to contribute a lot to the signal. And there, there's going to be very little difference or very little T1 contrast between different tissue types. So both fat is bright and both water is bright on a long TR sequence, which we commonly are going to be T2 weighted sequences with a long TR. If you have a short TR in the range of 30 to 100 milliseconds, only tissues that rapidly recover their longitudinal magnetization will contribute a lot to the signal. So something like white matter will be bright or fat will be bright and water or CSF or fluid filled structures will be dark because they have not had time to recover their longitudinal magnetization. So they don't have a lot of longitudinal magnetization to harness with our RF pulse to create that transverse magnetization which we can then measure with our coils. When we think about our time to echo, the time to echo is how long are we going to allow our protons to dephase before we try and refocus them or cause them to go back into phase and we do that either with our 180 degree pulse or with gradient switching okay and so the variable dephasing between different tissue types contributes to the T2 contrast cortical bone dephases almost instantly and because of that no matter how short our TE is, cortical bone almost always looks dark. Muscle dephases more rapidly than water. So if we have a long TE, then we will have more chance for the muscle to become dark and water to remain bright. So if you think about our MRCP images that are very long TR, very long TE, the water is the only thing that hasn't dephased at that point, and so fluid-filled structures are bright. If we have a very short TR, short TE sequence, well then both the, the water um, has not dephased, but it hadn't had time to recover its longitudinal magnetization. When we look at that for neuroimaging, you can see that white matter dephases very rapidly, 
and so white matter on a T2 weighted image will be darker than your gray matter which is darker than your CSF. This chart just shows that how rapid that dephasing is and how it relates to our pulses. So we have our 90 degree pulse, we get both T2 star decay and T1 decay. The T2 star decay is due to local magnetic field inhomogeneity and the T2 decay is due to intrinsic differences in the molecular structure that the hydrogen protons exist in. After the T2 decay has caused all of our loss of transverse magnetization, we apply a 180 degree pulse at one half of our TE, and that refocuses our protons. So they come back into phase. As they come back into phase, that generates our echo, and we measure that echo, and that's where we get our signal. And then they will rapidly dephase again, that rapid dephasing can then be rephased with another 180 degree pulse and we as they come back into phase we'll get another echo. Notice the strength of the first echo is greater than the strength of the second echo and that's because of intrinsic T2 decay which we can't counteract with our 180 degree pulse. So in the end our T2 signal is based on our sequences TE. If we have a very short TE on the order of a few milliseconds, okay, we don't we haven't allowed for separation of our different tissue types based on their dephasing. And so the, the T2 properties contribute very little to our contrast. If we have a long TE, we have allowed for our other tissues like white matter and gray matter to dephase, and if we go very long, those structures will have almost no signal, but fluid-filled structures, which take a long time to dephase, will still have signal and will contribute a lot. So we'll maximize our contrast based on the T2 dephasing properties of the different tissue types. Let's review the three basic weightings that we are going to use. A T1 weighted image, is going to have a short TR and that short TR is going to maximize the difference in longitudinal recovery between tissue types. But we're going to have a very short TE to minimize the differences in dephasing. So short TR and a short TE minimizes dephasing maximizes T1 separation, creates a T1 weighted image. With a T2 weighted image, we're going to have a very long TR. So all the tissue is going to have recovered its longitudinal magnetization. That means it can all be excited with our RF pulse to create transverse magnetization. We're then going to pick a TE that maximizes the dephasing differences between tissue types. So you have near complete T1 recovery, maximum dephasing separation, and that creates a T2 weighted image. Now if we want to just overall maximize signal intensity, which we're doing in MSK when we're looking at cartilage or menisci, we allow for complete T1 recovery with a long TR. We minimize dephasing with a short TE, and so we have a long TR short TE sequence and that creates proton density, maximizing our signal. In summary, T1 relaxation relates to the realigning of protons with the z-axis. And once protons are realigned, we can generate transverse magnetization from that longitudinal magnetization by applying an RF pulse that transfers energy into those protons. If you have a short time to recovery that increases the separation between different tissue types based on their T1 relaxation properties. If you have a long TR, almost all the tissue is recovered fully or fully realigned with the z-axis and so you minimize the contribution of T1 properties to contrast. 
T2 relates to dephasing. The protons may still be spinning in the transverse plane, but their variable speeds cause them to cancel one another out. We can rephase them with 180 degree pulses or with gradient switching to generate our echoes. And using a short TE or time to echo minimizes the differences in tissue types by minimizing dephasing. A long TE maximizes the difference or the T2 contrast by allowing water to still have a lot of transverse magnetization and other tissue types to have lost a lot of transverse magnetization or dephased more than water. I know these are very challenging concepts. I hope that I've given you some insight. Certainly, if you have any questions, please feel free to bring them up during our in-class session.